polytechnic graduates, those days that they were polytechnics yeah. and pre current polytechnics, they will come and struggle for the same jobs with university <laughs> graduates, right? Yeah. So the unemployment issue has always been there. Yeah, but my point is that at least the intent behind the setting up of the polytechnics, for example, was to give us middle level manpower. So at the top of it is the guy from the university. But today, where is the space for middle level man- yeah, manpower? Actually, there is. Indeed, In which the, recruitment, we want? The, the recruitment for when we started setups for all the basic engineers, all the people who, for example, let me use ECG as an example. The ECG engineer at the station is the guy from the university, the electrical, what do you call it, engineer from the university. Now, the gentleman who wants to come around to check whether or not you've done legal connection is the guy from the polytechnic. That gentleman may be supervising three or four other people who may have lower than the polytechnic degree at their technical education level. That's how the structure is supposed to be. Supposed to be, I love yes. that. Is that realistically working yes, now? Yes, I see that happening, for example, the ACG. Oh, they run the structure like that. Want, what, which, where is I have not seen. Day? I have not seen <laughs> anybody with electrical engineering oh. having to be the one going to disconnect people's lighting from the investors. Raymond, the point here is that the job market is choked, whether or not you can make a good example of the ECG. Yeah. But the job market is choked in every yes across yes. board, mm-hmm. and so people call it what academic inflation. You are doing more. You are doing um, uh, jobs that would normally have not been. Uh, required for people yeah. of your qualification so to do, and that is something that yeah. is done. Underemployment, yeah, and and and, and you know you know under, underemployment figures in this country yes. are huge. Are we, very, we're very high. Are close to uh, and it's forty eight percent of all the employments being underemployment. Exactly, it's, it's so quite different from the vulnerable employment, which is like sixty eight percent. So if that is happening in the first place, Raymond, yeah, that 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 settles the score that this issue of people of certain education levels um, doing certain jobs. The, the issue, the basic question there is employment and in the, the, the issue of job creation at all levels of the educational ladder but and that must be looked at so the point i'm making in this case is that there are no specific level engagements that for example if you left bc today you could be guaranteed employment anywhere true yes no, but even when for you university left, graduates you're not getting jobs you are, when you left senior high school you could equally be guaranteed employment anywhere indeed that is where the problem is the yeah. problem is compounded by people dropping off along the line with no opportunities for them. So, automatically, everybody's aim is to go to the highest level. Because if you get to the highest level, the belief is that your chances are highly improved when you get to, let's say, university. Okay. To be able to do that job required. Okay, Raymond. Um, yeah. le- let me, let's move to another leg of this discussion because you're talking about children failing examinations. You you keep you kept mentioning the points that Mal- if thirty percent of our, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can hear you. Okay. Ah, if, okay. if 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 thirty percent of our of people who wrote one of those subjects, for instance, science or so, yeah, would not have been failed, mm-hmm. would not have failed if D seven and E eight were accepted. Were accepted grades. So so let me move to Malik with this question. Malik, do you think the problem is with the policy of not accepting people who got D seven or E eight, or it's like what Raymond said again? Children cannot compute well. Or can do not comprehend well, and so they are failing the examination. Do you think the problem is with the policy, or it's with the in, the people who write the examination who are failing? The problem is with the structure we have. It's not the policy. Why we we were here two years ago or three years ago, the GES decided that, or was it the Ministry of Education decided they was going to lower the pass mark in order for people for a lot more people to to yeah. qualify. Yeah, that policy didn't make any sense. Because if you, if you set a bar, and because people are not crossing the bar, instead of asking why people are not crossing the bar, is it that the people are not properly trained, they are not equipped with the right skills, or the people training them are not properly trained themselves, you lower the bar. Do you think that elsewhere, the people you are training, if they were to compete on the world stage, the bar will be lowered for them? The answer is absolutely no. I think we have a national crisis on our hands. Unfortunately, we are not paying attention to it. Okay. In the course of the the run up to to the election in 2016, Mrs. Yvonundum said something on this show, which stuck with me. He says every single one of us should go back to our primary school and check whether the school is in a better state than it was when you were there. Okay. And whether the turnouts in that school are better than they are 
um, they are bet better today than they were. The answer is absolutely not. Very many of us, if we went back to our primary schools today, particularly if they were public schools, absolutely, you would find that things were better then than they are today. That is the clearest indication that we have a national crisis. Because if the economy has improved, facilities have improved, um, IT has improved, and yet the performance in our schools are getting worse, then it tells you we have a problem. Mm. And I'll give an example. If I go back to my village school, for example, I do not think that there is evidence, there is opportunity for anybody to come out of that school um, today and do well. Okay. And yet, note, not too long ago, just last month, Justice Bedu was, was in my village. And he came back to me and said, wow. He was shocked. There is a school facility which was built by uh, President Mills' government. Nice edifice, six-unit classroom block. They have desks and everything in the school. At the time I went to school in that village, there was no structure. We went to school under trees. There were no desks. We sat on pebbles, stones. And yet, today, there is zero opportunity for someone to come out of that school and do well. Even though they have a structure? Even though they have a school building, they have a better structure, they have desks okay. that they sit on. In fact, the people teaching them are better trained than those who taught us. Okay, we have had a lot of concentration on infrastructure when it comes to education, improvement of education policy. But let me, let me move to Enimwa with these comments. Malik seems to make a point that we should rather be looking at what, make children, what makes children fail. But, um, Daniel, it's very interesting because um, um, Raymond had said that you can pass all your other subjects and if you fail in English, then you will not be accepted into the university. And it's really funny because my question is, how do you write a paper in English, which you were taught in English, pass that paper and then actually fail your core English? So you can get an A in chemistry or an A in physics or a B and you can still fail in English. Well, of course, as it was much a hypothetical as, situation. So. No, I know, but I'm saying that as much as, I'm saying that if you can pass your other subjects, then you shouldn't fail English. And this is where I'm going with it, is that our educational system is, is set up in such a way that you can pass physics and fail English. My point is that it's chew and pull. So you can write the technical exam, but you fail comprehension because you do not understand. And that is the problem, the fundamental problem with our educational system. We are not taught to understand. We are not rewarded to understand. We are not rewarded for our ability to reason. We are rewarded for our ability to regurgitate information. And as long as we continue to focus on that, we will have results like this. As long as we continue to focus on that, we will have a system like this. We will have governments like this. We will have people in power taking their children outside. Because outside, it's about the ability to reason. I remember when we had um, Chrissy in the studio, the, the young man who, was, who got admission into the eight Ivy League um, schools. And he talked about his journey. And what stood out for me was how he said, in the midst of this um, community where people did not succeed, one teacher believed in him and said, you know what, let's learn, let's focus you can do this. It was not really a matter of less memorize, less this. It, it was putting the confidence in the child that if you can understand, if you can reason, if you can learn, then, then you can, as a black kid in a disadvantaged neighborhood, get into eight Ivy League schools. And we were all proud of him, but we're not willing to do the things that we need to do to be able to get our children to that level. And that is completely changing. So the, the crux of your point is that we are we are focusing on the wrong things when it comes to the education sector. I do. I do. I, I believe that infrastructure is important. Okay. I, in like what Malik said, you know, sitting on stones and pebbles. But I would pick stones and pebbles any day if you're teaching my child how to think. Over putting them in a building that was was built. Hang okay. on. I, over putting oh, them in a building that was put up for propaganda or for election purposes and not putting the teachers that are trained properly to teach my children how to think because the teachers themselves can't think. That's an interesting question. Can you have one without the other? But uh, uh, Insha, good the morning. kids are facing... Yeah, yeah, good morning. The, 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 the students are fa failing mathematics and 
and English. Yes. So lack of ability to comprehend and lack of ability to compute. So in this case, can we say that, is it fair to say that we are focusing too much on um, regurgitation and not comprehension? You see, okay, I'm going to answer this question differently. Um, anyone said something about Kwame's story um, and said Chrissy. Chrissy's story, that one teacher believed in me. The key word in there is teacher. How are we developing the teachers that are teaching our children? The essence of teaching is to reproduce knowledge at the end. So if people are failing, I'm going to go right back. The children are appearing in class. They're coming to school. They're being taught, but they're not passing. I will go back to how they're being taught. I'll go back to who's teaching them. How prepared is the person who's teaching them? How were they, they brought to that level? What kind of training did they themselves receive? How are they able to identify people who are sitting in class and not getting what is being taught? Are they doing dipsticks as they go along? Do they even know how well they're preparing the pupils or the students to write the exam? See, we focus too much about, uh, on, on examination. I know a number of people who I sat the O-level with and A-levels with who did not pass, but have gone on to make something good of themselves. The education system we have in the country today is miles and light years away from what we did have before. And forget infrastructure. We were studying in rooms that had no light with lanterns. I think you guys are downplaying the role that's in No, no, I'm in making role. a point. I'm making a point. Infrastructure is an, an, an important enabler, mm -hmm. but it is not the fundamental yeah, so thing we, that yes, makes... So, we, we so, so say, let's choose one over I'm, the other. That no, does, I'm saying that before anyway, you it's not start, just you. The point has been made before. I know, but before you start focusing on, okay, so we've had improvement. I, I, I like the way Malik was listing the improvements that, okay, now that we have more, uh, we have introduced ICT, we've done this, we've done that. Yes, great. We're trying to catch up with the rest of the world. But are we focusing on what makes education? The quality of instruction. The ability to light a bulb in a young person's mind. That's when you've educated someone. Are we achieving that today? Shura, can I cite this to just emphasize the point you are making about the centrality of teaching? I had great difficulty in appreciating fractions. When I see on the board... 1 over 2 plus 3 over 5. I would chew it, chew the formula and do it. But I had no idea what it means. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just couldn't understand it. Why is, what, what is 1 over 2? Yeah. I, just, I just couldn't appreciate it. I went to training college and this Canadian guy came to teach us. And he brought apple into the class with a knife. And then he chopped up the apple into three parts and picked one and said, when you see one over three, this is it. Mm -hmm. It's tangible. You saw, you saw the apple, it was one. And suddenly he chopped it three. into three and then he picked one out of the three. You see, Malik, you he just... He said this is one out of three. To me, you've summed up what education should be about. That the knowledge and instruction you're giving becomes applicable in life. Today, I, when I'm driving, I instinctively calculate what my braking distance should be behind a vehicle. Because I've forgotten this teacher's name. But we all used to call him IB. It's at Mary Secondary School. When we were learning mechanics in physics, and we were doing acceleration... We did we all of that. Yes, we did. We did. We did. We did. We did. We did. Uh, we, did, we, did we did an assignment, uh, an exercise rather, and he taught us. Basically, it was a problem. What would be the distance um, that an object traveling at a particular speed will stop mm. giving a plane? In that exercise, when we were done, he explained that, you see, so if your car was driving at this rate and this and you started braking at this point, this is how you're able to... That stuck with me. At the time where I couldn't tell a gear shift from uh, uh, a steering. Yeah. But it stuck with me. So, so it, it's the, the quality of the, of the teaching. Yes. And beyond that, how passionate the okay. people who are giving the instructions are.
Okay, we've come here. I'm glad we've come to this point. But let me just put in this quick plug. It's 13 minutes past 8. This is the Super Morning Show. If you just tuned in, I'm Daniel Dazin. Shua Ado is here. Malik Abbas Dabo is here. Enima Enima Do is here. Raymond Aqua is also here. We are talking about how children fail. Why do children fail examinations like the WASI? And I just put some interesting figures. You know, Ghana spent 6.1% of its GDP on education. Policymakers will tell you that 95% of that is spent on staff <laughs> compensation and remuneration. That means basically it's, it's used to pay teachers and workers in the education sector. How is it that? And and if you if you work the numbers more, you realize that we spend a lot more on our, our education than, than even some developed countries. So anymore, how is it that we spend so much on basically paying teachers? Yes, when when this comes back, the conversation that we have has to be about teachers. Because you're you're talking about paying teachers, you're not talking about educating teachers. By the time that you're paying them, the damage has already been done because they haven't been trained in a way that facilitates our children being better. And so it's a vicious cycle, though, isn't but have you it? Been because to teacher training colleges, Malik, you were in teacher training college. Yes. Yeah. Are you saying that the way you were taught in teacher training colleges is? Um, uh, it disadvantages you in any Who way? says that people apply what they are taught at the training college when they are teaching? A lot of the time, people don't. Because when you go to the... When you go to training college and you are taught about all of these relevant previous knowledge, where you have to start a lesson, you must start from where the children know. That's what they call relevant previous knowledge. Okay. Where, what do they know? Then it is from what they know that you can add on new knowledge. Mm-hmm. And you have to use teaching learning materials and you have to do all of that. When we are... When we are doing teaching practice, you have to buy cardboards and all of that and okay. prepare teaching learning materials and go and teach because you want to pass your teaching practice. Okay. In practice, when you leave training college yes. and you are teaching, nobody is holding you Guys, to those standards. Guest. Guys, we have a guest. Vincent Tessifo has joined us on the phone lines. He's the PR of the Ministry of Education. Let's speak to him quickly. Um, Tessifo, thanks for joining us. Daniel. Yes. Uh, How are you? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm okay. It's been a while. Yes, 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 it has. We should meet up sometime. Um, in the first yes, yes. place, let's let's talk about um, this results. Custodians of, of education finding that 193,000 of the students cannot progress into universities because of their grades. What are your impressions? Right. A very good morning to you, Daniel, and um, your cherished listeners. Um, indeed, on Friday, the West African Examination Council um, how to release the results of the 2018 um, WASI results. Um, a very good look at the results suggested to me that um, there is room for improvement. Um, however, when you check the various results, and then, um, for example, if you take integrated science, you could see um, some increment in the percentage as you compare it to the 2017 figures, because um, in 2017, a number of students who were able to pass the integrated science was about 43%. Um, 2018, uh, we can beat our chest and talk about um, 52%. Um, same goes to social studies, uh, whereby you could also see an increment in the number of students who were able to pass um, compared to the 2017. Of course, um, I've heard people t- um, talk about the fact that when you look at the mathematics and the English language, there seems to be a fall in the percentage um, comparing that to the 2017. Um, but if you go into details and get the clear figures, the nominal figures, I mean, you could see an increment in the numbers um, as far as mathematics and uh, English language is concerned. It is only the percentage that you could see um, a shortfall. That notwithstanding, I think that um, there's more room for improvement. I think that there, there's going to be a deliberate attempt on the part of the Ministry of Education to make sure that in the 2019-2020, we should be able to make sure that we increase the number of students who will pass in the mathematics and English language. Have you been able to identify the causes of the failure from the ministry's perspective? There is going to be an investigation into it, but on top of, on top of my mind, I know that there are a number of reasons that can... Um, bring out such a um, fail word. Um, it can be um, a lack of interest on the part of the students as far as mathematics or English is concerned. You and I, when you were in our various senior high schools, there were a section of our students that you could always, um, as it were, tag as mass phobia or whatsoever. Again, it, it can also be the fact that um, there is 
lack of commitment on the part of teachers um, to, as it were, make sure that we are able to increase the number of students who pass mathematics or English language. So I cannot pinpoint one singular reason, but uh, when we are done with our investigations, I'm sure that we should be able to know the challenges or the problems that led to um, 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 that circumstance. So uh, right. the Ministry of Education is on top of of, of it. We, we hope that in no time we should be able to um, set out a clear roadmap as to how we are going to deal with this particular challenge. Right. Vincent, you said that there's going to be an investigation this year. Was there an investigation into last year's results? What did we find? Um, from where I sit now, very difficult for me to um, tell you what we exactly f- um, found last year. But what I know is that we should be able to make sure that there is an increment in the teacher contact. Um, if, for example, um, teachers spend six hours in class each day, can we have a look at it again and see if we can increase it from six to seven? Um, again, if teachers are having short vacations or the vacations that they are having now, can we have a look at it again and increase the vacation so that it can enable the teachers to be able to have robust um, research to be able to put to use in their various classrooms? Um, can it also be that there is some sort of congestion in the classroom which is making it very difficult for teachers to ensure proper educational measures or standards right. um, across board? Right. And so these are some of the things that I think that right. uh, we can look at and make sure that we increase the number of students who pass mathematics and English language. Yeah, Vincent, what I asked was that last year, when we had 43% of students failing integrated science, when we had a, a, a lower number of students failing mathematics, did we do this investigation you're talking about that we have to do now? And what did that investigation uncover? I'm unable to finish you with that information now. Um, but as I'm saying, on top of my mind, I know that there are certain things that we right. think that we can right. do right. You, you you have mentioned that you see it's interesting you mentioned that because of course you speak for the education ministry and right in in other places for instance let, let's take for instance china where the chief examiner's report comes out every year after examination like it does in ghana and the curriculum for the next year is informed by inputs from the chief examiner's reports do we not believe that applying something like that here could you know help in continuous improvement of course that's what i'm saying that there is a deliberate attempt on the part of the Ministry of Education to unravel such circumstances and deal with it head on. I'm saying that from what happened last year, okay, and what is happening this year, it, it suggests to everybody that there should be some sort of investigation to uh, make sure unravel such challenges, to make sure that we deal with those um, 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 failures. But I'm saying that it is very difficult at this moment for me to tell you what really transpired last year as far as investigations are concerned. Uh, maybe I can do that check and let you have it uh, later on in our investigation, um, in our interviews. Okay, so uh, uh, away from that, how are you taking up the recommendations of the Anamon Winsa Committee to your ministry? Well, I think I also saw it this morning. Um, one thing that we should also know is that Professor Jofus Anamon Winsa um, is a very good researcher. Um, he has published a number of books locally and internationally. Um, if you remember, somewhere in 2002, he was the chairperson or he was the chairman for a presidential committee that was set up by the president of the republic at the time. And the terms of uh, references of that particular committee was to make sure that um, they have a look into the entire educational system of this country and make sure that if there can be some suggestions to improve our educational system in this country. Some of the recommendations that came out of that particular committee that was shared by Professor Dufusama and the moment was that we should be able to expand our universal basic education and make the period span for about 11 years. That is why today we have kindergarten going for two years, we have um, primary school going for six years, we have junior high schools going for three years. So clearly, He's having that record of making an input into our educational system um, in this country. If you remember, in 2016, he also made mention of the fact that we can classify our universities, whereby, for example, KNUSC, where you and I went to, um, 
is a science-related university. So there is no need for us to have humanities courses being um, taught in that particular university. Same as University of Ghana, if it's a humanities school or if it's a humanity uh, university, there's no need to have science-related courses also from the University of Ghana. These were some of the recommendations he made in 2016. Um, again, if you remember, he also made mention of the fact that we should be able to expand teaching base of our various universities. <coughs> what it means is that we should be able to go beyond the normal traditional lecturers or um, traditional teachers in our various universities, whereby we can have captains of businesses, we can have okay. policy makers also teaching in our various universities. Mm. So I'm saying that this is a man who is having that track record okay. of making an input into our educational system. And whatever he's saying today, I have checked the figures that you also turned out. Um, clearly, I think there is something well coming, and the uh, Ministry of Ed uh, Education will have to have um, a look into the proposals that uh, Professor Namor okay. is proposing to the, 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 the government. Right, right. Um, Vincent Asifa, just before you go, uh, just so we're on the same page, so your response to the WASI results is that it's bad, you're investigating it before you have you come up with recommendations um, on improving the sector in general. I have not said that it is bad. I made mention of the fact that we have made some giant strides as far as English um, integrated science is concerned. We have made very good strides as, as far as... Um, social studies is also concerned. In fact, I even made mention of the fact that the nominal figures of what people are saying we were able to fail so much as far as math and English language is concerned is something that is, 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 is not true because the nominal figures, when you look on paper, is very good for us. It's the percentage that is not looking so good. But that notwithstanding, there is more room for improvement. The Ministry of Education will also make sure that there is a deliberate commitment to unravel those um, particular challenges and deal with them head on. Can you assure Ghanaians that this number, at least this percentage, will go down next year as a spokesperson for the ministry? I have sat in a number of meetings whereby um, the West African Examination Council, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and other stakeholders, um, have made sure that going forward, they should be able to um, put in a lot of energy <coughs> and time um, as far as our mathematics and English language and science is also concerned um, because there seem to be um, a trend of a number of followers over the years from, um, let me say, if yeah. I have to be charitable, from 2008 coming. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the trend suggests that, of course, we should do something about it. Uh, it it's not limited to a particular so year. So can that assurance be made that we are going to see an improvement from next year? Absolutely, given these I meetings give you that assurance. Per um, the number of meetings that I have sat in and the sort of um, um, contributions that are made by the various stakeholders. Thank you very much, Vincent Asifwa. He's spokesperson for the Ministry of Education. This is the Super Morning Show on Joy, 99.7 FM. Key points, yes, um, the performance is so-and-so. is good in some cases. It's bad in some. And, well, well, he said it's, it's, uh, there is room for improvement. Those are his exact words. Let me not misquote Mr. Asifwa there. And he said that uh, the assurances, it will improve because of the various measures they are taking, uh, they are putting in place this year. However, the, the specific measures will be known after they have properly investigated how come these um, students failed. It's 26 minutes past 8. We'll take these important messages. When we come back, we'll be speaking with Francis Anom Francois, Executive Member Association of Used Auto Parts Dealers, Abosio Kain. We'll also speak to Solomon Kote, General Secretary, Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, and Samson Awingebet Asaki. He is with the Importers and Exporters Association. We are talking about taxes and the possibility of increased taxes, particularly how it's going to affect the people who sell to you and eventually how it's going to affect you, especially if you are also in the business class. Answer this question for us if you can. How do you think we can raise revenue to meet our needs as a nation? 0244-340-437 at Joy997 on Twitter. Joy 99.7 on Facebook. Hashtag Joy SMS. We'll be back after this. It's a new day.